Hey kids, welcome to a lesson two, a multiple screen apps. Number one, design mode, layering and deleting. User interface elements can overlap one another. So you want the ability to change the order or depth at which each one is shown. You try it. Use the depth and delete tools to create the after image shown below. We'll look at that in a second. Scroll to the bottom of the properties tab you'll find the buttons which allow you to easily change the depth of an element. Change the depth of an element by using the double or single arrows. Click the double arrow to send your object all the way to the front or back. Click the single arrow to move your object up or down one layer. Over here we have a little example. We'll look at this here in a minute. We have some more reading to do. Delete an element by selecting it, click on it, in the design view, and then click the red delete button in the properties tab. This just means I can't delete objects on the screen. I actually have to go into the design, click on the object and delete it from there. Down here we have our before and after picture. What we have to do is make our little psychedelic Mickey here look like the bullseye right there. This should be pretty easy. We have to delete some images, move some other stuff around. Not too bad though. First thing, let's go ahead and look at the design tab. Let's talk about deleting. I know I have four objects here, but I only have two objects on my after image. If I click on one of these, it'll bring me to the properties tab down here and gives me all the information I need. I also have a delete button over here. So if I hit delete, all that should disappear. I'm gonna do this to all three of them. And then we have to move it over. I am just gonna eye up these little ones. Let's go ahead and center this top one. I'm gonna come down here and just change this to some more friendly numbers. 240 for the width, we'll keep 25 for the height. This entire thing right here is 320 pixels. Half of that is 160. If I take 240, divide that in half, which is 120, and subtract that from the 160 number, I will get 40. So if I click on here and move my X position to 40, that should center it. Looks pretty centered to me. The Y, we're just gonna eye it up. I think that looks pretty good. Next thing here, we have to make our dartboard. These are images layered on top of each other. You can see the blue should be the uh, background or bottom image, and the other two are on top. Currently, it's opposite. How do we do that? Well, we click on the image itself and the big image here will always overlap. So if I have to click this yellow one, I actually have to click all the way up here. This red one, I can't even click right now because the blue covers it up. I'm gonna click on that. And then if I go down here at the bottom in my properties tab, I can go to depth. I know it's the bottom image. So I'm gonna use the double one and send it all the way to the back. Look what happens all the way to the back. Let's go ahead and center this image. The X position should be 160. Oh no, that's not, what did I forget to do? Oh, I forgot to subtract the width. So the width of this is 300, divide that in half, that's 150. We're gonna subtract 150 from 160 and that gives us 10. So that position should be 10. Let's go ahead and take care of the Y position. Uh, 450, half of that is 225. We are going to subtract half of 300, which is 150. So 225 minus 150 is 75. So the Y position should be 75. That is perfectly centered there. I do have a little problem. Oh, no, I can grab it. So I'm pretty good. I'm just going to drag this down here and worry about this last. Let's take care of the yellow and the red. Yellow, I'm going to click on. 
right there. Uh, the yellow is 200 by 200. We are going to do our same math equations here. 160 minus 100 is 60. Let's go ahead and take care of our Y position. The screen is 450 pixels long. The circle is 200. That means we are going to subtract half of each, 225 minus 150. That is going to give us a Y position of 125. Hmm, something doesn't look right here. Let's take a minute and think about this. I have previously double checked my numbers, so I know our math is correct. What could possibly make this look a little weird? Let me click on this blue image here. You can see there is a lot of padding in the up direction of this blue, not so much down here. So this blue circle actually within itself isn't centered. What I did was I centered this box. Same thing with the yellow. What I actually did is center this box. So they are actually both mathematically correct. It just doesn't look aesthetically correct. So in this instance, I think I'm going to bump this up maybe 5, 10 to see how it looks. I know the X is pretty good. The only thing I'm really concerned with right now is the Y direction. Let's try 130. 130 looks pretty good. 135 to me though looks perfect. So on that one, we just had to adjust based on some image editing. You always have to take these kind of things into account when you're designing your own app. Let's go ahead and finish up with our final little dot or the bullseye. This one is going behind the yellow, so I need to bring this all the way forward. And I'm just going to move this over to the center temporarily. Let's go ahead and take care of centering it. In the X direction, we have 160 minus 45. That'll give us a 115 position in the X direction. In the Y, we have 225 minus 50. That is going to give us 175. And that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and increase this by five real quick, just like the other one. That to me looks a little more centered. Again, this was a padding issue with our image. Let's go ahead and center click the bullseye. Let's click on it. Right now it is 186 wide. If we divide that in half, that is 93. We're gonna take 160 minus 93. That is going to give us 67. So our X position should be 67. Y, really we're going to go by aesthetics. Let's just click this up twice. You can use your up and down keyboard arrow keys to move this. It's a little more fine movement. I typically use that a little more than I do the mouse. Before we finish here, I do want to draw your eye to one thing. If we do go to our code section, they have some code already supplied to us. If we go ahead and hit run, anytime we click one of these colors down in the debugging console, that color will come up. Now you notice that first time I clicked on yellow, you'll notice when I clicked what I think is blue down here, it said yellow. Remember, we still have that image padding here, so we have to take that into account. The code does not know it's a circle. It thinks it is a square. We can change this debugging console to say almost anything. Let's say every time I get a bullseye, it says Rhodes gets a bullseye. Spelled right. I can hit reset and run. Now every time I click on red down here, it should say Rhodes gets a bullseye. There you go. This debugging console is pretty powerful. We're gonna explore this in the upcoming lessons. I think this is all I have to do for this lesson. 
looking at my original and after picture, I am very close to what this looked like. I deleted three objects up here. I centered all of my circles. I learned a little bit about padding in images and I centered my click the bullseye and let's play bullseye. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Let's see if code.org agrees. Hey, good job kids, I'll see you on the next lesson.